Uh, I click live, so it should be live now. Um, just let me know if you guys see the stream and everything, and I can get started. I'm gonna assume you guys can. <coughs> I have not streamed in a while, uh, nor have I done a Ludum Dare in a while. I think it's been last one was Explode. I was I can't remember that might have been the beginning of last year. Um, I'm gonna check real quick to make sure this streams up, and then I'll actually start doing stuff. Yeah, looks like it's we're good. Okay. Uh, hello everyone. So, uh, I'm going to be doing some very long streams here for this game. Um, I just got the basic stuff set up here. Um, so there's already a lot of files in this project. And I, I already have an idea as well. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of files in this project. Um, but this is pretty much the core thing that's... Uh, I've got so far, which is just a red screen. That's all it is, and I can just close it. Um, so it's hooked up with my game engine thingy or framework, whatever you want to call it, pig pen. Uh, that's uh, this is a ton of pre built stuff that I can use, um, but this is pretty much just the code for the game so far. This one file right here, I'll add more to it as we go along. Um, Actually, I can zoom this in, I think. Where's the setting for that? Is it Control shift p Yeah. Uh, actually, no, it's in Preferences, isn't it? Settings? Oh, yep, here it is. So let's just go 17. And then... So that should be a bit easier for you guys to see. It's a bit harder for me, though, because um, I can't... S it slows me down because I can't see as much. This is why... I Every time I start a stream, or a lot of times when I start a stream, it'll be a bit small. And that's because I have to shrink it down so I can actually see what I'm looking at. When I enlarge it for streams, it's hard to see what's actually going on. Um, you're glad I say Ludum Dare, not Ludum Dare. Um, I mean, technically, uh, the coll colloquial pronunciation is Ludum Dare, but um, it comes from Latin, so the second one I think is technically correct. Uh, but no one says that. It's like um, the guy who says, the, the creator of GIF that says it should be pronounced as GIF. Um, Alright. So, um... The first step here is going to be the artwork, and I, what I'm going to do here, you're going to you're going to see a lot of artwork going on at the beginning of this. Um, and this is going to turn into kind of a multi-hour art stream. And then it's going to lean into the programming. Because with Game Jam stuff, it's nice if you can get pretty much all of the artwork out of the way at the beginning. If you look at my time lapses, that's what I normally do. Um, so, <laughs> on the topic of time lapses, <laughs> I'm going to start this when I actually get started here. Um, so that I can actually create a time lapse after this. This is going to be one of those few few games where I do the stream, and then I also do the time lapse. Um, I think there's another one I did this for. I can't remember which one it was. I don't know. I don't think it was, was it Wandering Soul. I don't know what. No, I don't think it was. I don't think I had a time lapse for Wandering Soul. But um, uh, s some of my game. Well, I, I think one of my games I did the stream and then also. Did the time lapse, so it, it's a bit intense because, well, <laughs> I have to manage this on top of the stream, on top of coding, so it gets a bit busy. Um, so the first step for the artwork is going to be to get a palette going, um, and then I can start drawing things. Uh, before I do that, let me give you a bit of the rundown of the idea. So the idea is, well, first of all, the theme is delivery. The idea is to take um, the like, I want to make a platformer. Oh no, what a surprise. Uh, <laughs> I want to make a platformer where you're a moon rabbit um, and you talk to other moon rabbits and um, uh, they, they have things that they lost that they need you to find. Um, and basically you get maps, sort of. If you've played my game Mop, M-A-U-P, um, you have like maps that you have to match to an area and you have to figure out which one's correct. So I'm going to do something similar where it's like I give a rough sketch of an area 
and then maybe put an X in one spot and then you have to dig in that spot and if you dig in that spot you find the lost item for the whatever NPC. Um, so it's pretty much going to be kind of an exploration and a cartography I guess type of game. The maps, um, because otherwise it doesn't make sense kind of I guess uh, in the game world, um, the, the NPCs don't give you the maps directly. They'll t recommend that you go to some like another rabbit with a moon rabbit with a magic orb to um that will give you a map based on um the needs of that npc so it's using magic um but anyway so it's the game is based off of two games so like first of all i said mop here let me pull that up uh where's mop where mop at I didn't stream up, did I? No, I didn't. Um, so, yeah, it's based on this. So, there's these different sketches of the um, uh, of the area, and then you have to kind of match it. So, instead of matching it to a variety of maps, it's like you look at the map and you try to find where the X is and match it up with the world space, and you're like, okay, it's right here, so you have to dig there. So, that's the idea for that. The other thing... This is a bit more... The, the aesthetic's going to be a knockoff of something else. Um, so one of my main inspirations in my early years of game development from like... Um, from... I don't know how many years ago. Uh, what year is this? Let me see if I can find the year. Um, I, I don't... I've tried to avoid searching stuff on um, my main monitor because I did my taxes on this browser. Uh, <laughs> Alright, uh, 2015 is the date. So, eight years ago, this game was made. Uh, I think I found it maybe a year or two after. And I, um, uh, I really liked it. Um, I would play it on a stream if I had the time, but I don't have that time. So, but just the aesthetic, um, you would have to, the music plays a lot into the aesthetic, but the aesthetic is really good. Um, it's also a rabbit, and it's also a Ludum Dare game from a while ago. Um, so I'm going to try to adapt that basically to my style. Oh no, I just minimized everything by slightly shaking the window. Hold on. <laughs> I need to figure out how to disable it. There's got to be a way. There we go. I think that's everything. What? Oh, Chrono Ops just disappeared. That's fun. Alright. Um, where did the... There it is. So yeah. Um, I'm going to derive something from this aesthetic. Obviously, I mean, you can see it's quite a bit different from our style. So my stuff's going to still look quite a bit different. Uh, but this is kind of what my stuff's gonna be based off of. I wish I could add some water in, but, um, unfortunately my water stuff runs on compute shaders, which isn't universally accessible, so I'm going to have to do some, uh, other stuff, um, to make the game look nice. Alright, so, also, something interesting that, um, there's advice that I got from, or rather, not directly, it was a video made by a guy well known for making videos about the Ludum Dare. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Pixel Prophecy was his name, I think. Um, uh, he made a video talking about how you shouldn't be too concerned about, uh, like, um, ripping off game ideas, um, as long as, I mean, when you make a game from the ground up, as long as it's not too simple, um, usually you end up implementing your own style on it, so obviously I'm going to have my own artistic style, and then also just mechanically it's, uh, going to be a bit different. There's going to be NPCs, and there's no enemies, so, um, it's mostly just the aesthetic that I like, but, um, yeah, that, that concept, though, of your style coming through on the stuff you create, um, is one of the reasons I'm not too concerned about ripping things off. <laughs> Um, definitely if you're newer in game development, you have to be a bit more careful about that stuff because I guess you haven't really developed a style as much yet and it can be, 
really obvious if you're copying someone. <laughs> um, and this one, I don't think anyone would know if I didn't say, like, right now that that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm gonna pull up low spec here, and then we can get started on the palette stuff. Actually, I'm gonna read chat real quick. Um, how do you prevent flickering when rendering particles? Is that the whole horizontal thing where it stretches out across the screen? Because that's like a pie game bug from the main branch. Um, hello from Brazil. Hello. Um, like the face tracking I have? I, I wrote it myself. <laughs> I, I need to update it. I can do a lot better now. I, um, this thing's rendered entirely in pie game. I can totally do it like in OpenGL and make it actually 3D. Because uh, there's some stuff, like, if I turn all the way sideways, you can see that it doesn't look too great. <laughs> um, there's, like, no depth to it. So um, I need to, uh, uh, fit, like, just update that at some point. Um, the thing is, though, is that where we are with AI, there's a decent chance that if I update it, it'll be, like, a couple months away before we have a good general solution for doing avatars like this. Um through just, um, uh, I guess, you know, just some sort of machine learning solution. I'm already using machine learning for the tracking, but for the actual um, image generation part. Um, oh, you're getting the flickering on particles that remove? That's because if you're iterating, iterating over a list and you do a remove on the particles, it'll, um, it'll change the index of all of the items in the list. So you actually skip the next item in the list when you remove one. Um, if you're doing a for loop over it. So you have to remove um, either outside of the list or you have to make a copy of the list for iteration so that you don't change the um, indexes uh, when you remove one during iteration. Um, so yeah, there's a couple ways to do that, but uh, the flickering is yeah, just an index thing. It's a technicality. <coughs> All right. That's enough talking. Uh, I, I just talked for how long? How long is this? Uh, oh, it's 12 minutes. Not too bad. Normally I end up talking for like 30 minutes before I actually do anything. Um, let's pull up low spec. Da -da -da. Palettes. Alright, so this is the beginning of the stream, I guess. Uh, how can you become a Python master? Um just make stuff i mean it, it's a, kind of the same advice you get for any type of i guess uh area that you can practice in um you there's not that many shortcuts i mean if you go down if i had the time to break it down more which i don't right now there's small things you can do to make sure you're learning efficiently uh but you're not going to get there without actually putting the time in um i might I think I've broken it down in the past how you get there. Actually, I did. I my one of my most popular videos is about that. The um, uh, what was it titled? The act how to actually get into game dev one. Um, that's more oriented towards game dev, but the same principles still apply. Anyways, I do need to actually get started here. Um, <laughs> oh, hello, Apple in a box. I've seen you in like all my streams. I don't know how you're pretty much always here but okay um <laughs> so i'm gonna start this now this is where stuff actually starts if you watch the time lapse this is gonna be the beginning all right so we have our palettes what i'm looking for if you saw the lucid stuff from a moment ago i'm looking for purple kind of like i don't know kind of like these colors but i don't want it to be one color ramp um so, and it, it also wanted to be a bit more saturated. So I want some greens and some purples and pinks and blues. I want to stay away from, I mean, I can have yellow too, uh, but I want it to be generally a cooler. And I mean, like uh, from the color theory perspective, not just cool as in the word cool <laughs> type of um, palette. Ah. Keep having the burp. All right. So, and one thing, oh, this is actually pretty close to what I need. Um, actually, I could probably get it with this one. Uh, I do like this one. I'm gonna go with this one. Um, so I, I guess, as this one says, pastel, that's kind of what I'm doing. 
but in different settings, palettes can imply different things. So I'm going to take this one. Uh, I'm going to look for the 8x copy and we can get started on the artwork. Alright, uh, hold on. Moon Rabbit Collection, Data, Images. Uh, wait, hold on. If I do this, okay, cool. Do, do you see this thing in some of my streams where if I, if the file explorer name, which can change based on the file you have open, changes to the name of the game, it'll like zoom in on it and cause some problems. But, uh, because they did it in lowercase, I'm fine. So, yay. Um, so, hold up. So I'm gonna just put paint here. I'm gonna save this into the new project. Do images, and I go sketch. Cool. This is where we're doing a drawing. Classic MS Paint time. Uh, so I can take this palette. Uh, can I not miss on the right click? There we go. Ooh. Nope, that's not the right size. Uh, there we go. So that's our sketch. I'm going to just close out all this random stuff I have open over here. Um, and then we can start drawing. So a good place to start is usually the uh, characters, because then you can do the towel sizes in proportion to that. So I can just pretty much draw. If you start with the characters, you can draw it at any size, and then you can um, adjust everything else from there. Um, all right, you also want to participate, you also want to participate in the jam, then, uh, go ahead and participate, because there's, like, what, we've got 9 plus 24 hours left, so we've got 33 hours, uh, all right, uh, you could see that I'm still around, um, yeah, I, I don't, I haven't been putting out many videos lately, but, um, I, I have been working on stuff. I've been working on stuff a lot more than um, usual as well. It's just that uh, there are reasons I'm holding up videos. <laughs> uh, you, you'll probably start to see videos coming out more soon. Um, I just have a reason for holding stuff up. Anyways. Uh, so the everything's a rabbit. Um, they're going to be kind of bipedal rabbits, kind of. Uh, and... When they dig, they're gonna go on all four, but, um... What color do I want it to be? That's a, the first question. I could use the, these... I guess they're supposed to be grays, but they're obviously not quite gray. Um... But it, it, in this palette, it's effectively the gray, so I could probably use this. So... Uh, let's go with... Um, I'm just gonna blob this thing out here. And how to I don't know if that's like the tricky thing with this is that you have to imply that there's two ears with a very limited number of pixels. I could make it larger, but that runs into some time constraints. Um uh, so now let's give it some legs. My classic legs that are... I'm actually going to give them bigger legs because they're rabbits. Uh, maybe not that big. Uh, they also probably need to be pretty short. I, it's good to draw these things first in kind of like a running pose. Um... Okay, that, this is looking very bottom heavy at the moment. Um, it's also got like a beer belly <laughs> or something like that. Uh, it's good to draw in a running pose because um, if you stack up the legs, you don't get a great idea of the form. Uh, so I'm not going to bother with the tail because it's kind of too small. Um, I'm thinking maybe don't use massive legs. Maybe do just, uh... This, this guy's got, like, the, the 
gamer neck. I think I need to um, shift the, the ears back like that. There we go. Now I just do that. And uh, there we go. That's more like a rabbit. And probably. Uh, this is one of the trickier parts, just getting figuring out how I'm going to do the legs on this. Um, so if I'm making it run, it would probably be like that ish. Yeah. Do I want to? So there's a couple ways they can do the legs. So th there's the hobble technique where um, they just have tiny little legs where you just do you just do like a you just do something like that and then they just like pick up one leg and then they pick up the other <laughs> and then you just get like a two frame walking animation um that that's the easy one actually i could put on like just like a couple of pixels for the tail right there but um maybe i should go for something in between just go like uh, that doesn't look right. Uh, there. Alright, now I need to make it more rabbit form. Uh, could probably be a little bit taller. Um, and then we could probably make the head wider. Okay, no, I don't, can't touch the ears right there. Um, can I actually separate these out, maybe? Okay, that, that actually might work. Um, once you get the form of the first one right, the rest is easy. So I'm going to just block out kind of the head. Ah. Cool. Right, there's the head. I think it's gonna do like the tail maybe. Um, and then maybe put a shadow on the body. And then give it eyes. Uh, actually, I can. Do that as well. Um. Would it have black eyes or white eyes? Or maybe something fancy like a blue eyes? No, that looks bad. Uh, could maybe do white though. Or both. Um, I'm gonna do black and white. Let's, and then you like turn it into a Minecraft mob. That... <laughs> That's cursed though. Um, I, I'm thinking... Okay, I can make everything look really sleepy. Just give it the... Uh, that looks like an alien. Um, just the, the two wide. Why don't I do that? That looks a little bit possessed. Um, I think this one's more acceptable. Uh, wait. Rabbits have, like, a nose, right? Rabbit image. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so they have, like... Um, hmm. Their nose is kind of flat. The question is, should I, like, put a dot on it? Or not? It's, it's a bit angular. So maybe I should, uh... I could do, like, that. But then... Uh... Now I can just, I guess, move the body over? But then the head's pretty big. Uh, the tail definitely needs to go down. I'm doing that. Um, actually, in fact, I think the whole body needs another pixel of height. There we go. 
There we go. Um, so I can also add... Wait. I can do that. And then... Now I need some way to differentiate the different characters, I guess. So that's going to be... One of them. Uh, I can... What types of clothing can I give a rabbit to differentiate it? I guess the scarf would work. Um, I don't want to do like full cloth physics or rope. Fi Actually, no, I do have a rope physics thing. I could totally give it a rope claw. Oh, oh, oh look, a rope. Um, not claw. Uh, a scarf. And just like dangle it off the character. So I'm actually going to lean towards that for now. I'll stick it on at the end if I have time. So for that. We just throw in some red. Uh, uh, is it too? How should I do this? Uh, just like shade that like that, and then we can give it some. Uh, stuff there. Uh, sure that's close enough, maybe. I, I don't think the red contrasts enough. Let's give it like a, maybe a green one. Oh, that's bright. It's still bright. So we use the funny uh, technique where you I am adding a color here. Uh, go towards the blue. We shift it down. And we can just. Uh, boop. Boop. That's an extra color. Make it a little darker. There you go. Problem solved. Cool. Uh, unfortunately, I think that clashes with the body color a bit. Um, hmm. What else can I do here? I think red is actually the way to go here. So I'm gonna switch back to that. And then I can just make that work properly later. Um, so, but for the other characters, um, well, one of them, uh, oh, my phone just went off. I need to, I thought it turned off the buzzing. I guess not. Anyways, um, uh, I'm gonna give this one a hat. It's gonna be like a farmer looking thing. But yeah, there's gonna be like three NPCs. Oh, high gauge. Um, he probably left though. He does not follow me for my game development stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna give this thing a hat. Uh, and should I make the ears poke through? Would the ears poke through a hat for like a farmer? Or would you like do this? If a rabbit wears a hat, does it wear it like this or like this? <laughs> It's like the pants question for animals. Um, fortunately, I don't have a do arm, so um, I don't have to deal with the pants question. Um, my mouse movement speed shows my patience. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm partic particularly patient during game gyms. But, uh, right. So I'm going to put the hat like that. And um, I think normally... You want to lighten up that color, but then we also want to shade the head a bit because there's a hat over it now. Um, so there's our hat. Uh, I'm thinking maybe move the hat slightly, and then oop, oop. Ah, nope, there.
There is our hat. Um, <clears throat> and then this one will be wearing... Is it weird to give some of the characters pants and then not give other characters pants? <laughs> if, if the character you play is wearing a scarf, but then you see a farmer in overalls, does that imply that this one's naked? <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's, th th I want to give it overalls though. So for overalls, it's just like, something like that, I guess. Uh, and, um, so for overalls, you definitely need like a pattern. Um, How do you, so normally you get like that patch that's right here, I guess. Uh, I think I'm gonna show a bit more of... There you go, that's closer. Um, hmm. I would also would need shoes. Uh, here, have some shoes. Uh, actually, if I'm doing that, then it should probably be like this. <laughs> uh, trying to give a tiny pixel rabbit shoes the stream. Um, I'm gonna grab another even darker color for right there. Actually, I could probably just reuse this color, right? No, that has... Mm, I think that's close enough. I don't... The, the colors clash a little bit, that's the problem. Specifically the purple, I don't like that. Um, I need like an actual darker blue. Oh. So I mean, it can go towards purple a little bit, but it needs to be like... I think it, the problem is it's like not saturated enough. There we go. That's more I was looking for. So I'm gonna add that in like right here. Eh, we'll just, I, I don't care. <laughs> There we go. That's our farmer. Uh, have a lot of air in my stomach, apparently. Um, so we have our farmer. Uh, another rabbit we need. I probably should have copied another one before I started coloring on it. Um, let me just grab that color and fix this. And grab this color, fix that. And then we can copy another one and so we have uh, five to do we already did two of them so we have, there's three left um, I choose a bow tie oh I can make one of them have a bow tie that's a I don't know why that that makes sense for rabbits I don't know why it's just I don't know is it a trope all right bow tie uh, that doesn't look like a bow tie. Uh, I think I would have to do it like right here. How would you do that? Because I don't feel like I have enough pixels for that. How do you do a bow tie? Because that does look like an H. And then this is like... That looks like a shirt. Um... Wait. Hold on, I might be able to do some, uh... Actually, oh, you know what a mistake I made on the farmer? The, um, the head's facing to the right, which means that, uh... Actually, this should be more like this. And that. And there we go. Um, yeah, I gotta mind the direction that the thing's facing. Um, oh, also, while I'm at it, I could actually probably... Because the underside of rabbits, the fur is generally whiter, isn't it? So I can probably just go give it a white belly like that. That looks like shading, though. Maybe I can actually make it white? So, 
the should probably do that to the tail too. Um just adding more contrast to characters is I feel like a good thing. Makes them more visible. <laughs> um I could probably do a little bit of the the thing I think that that pixel's okay. Um so uh just like that. That that I mean, this is the normally you would just copy paste, but I'm I don't know why I don't feel like copy pasting right now. Nope, I missed. There you go. I've fixed the rabbits. Um now wait, I'm gonna just check and make sure chrono lapses. That's not a chrono lapse. Hello. Wasn't it uh hello did i not click start i'm gonna check and make sure we'll see what happened there so i have my time lapse folder it's running i can see it running but this one's not it where is it uh whatever i'll figure that out later <laughs> anyways um so the next one, I do want to give him a bow tie. So what 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 does that look like? Uh, can I? I think the the fact that it's at an angle might help me a bit. Can do that maybe. Would it be angled up or down? Oh oh, wait. Hmm. This is tricky. Um, what will the game be about? Uh, collecting lost items by digging them up using maps. Uh, just two pixels. Okay, let's try that. The thing is, is you don't know it's a bow tie then. I think maybe like. Maybe I can get away with three. Oop. No. Um. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm gonna give him a top hat. That that's the first step. Um, he gets the top hat. All right. Uh. So top hat. It's gonna. Cover the ears. That's all a rabbit needs in a top hat. Um, and then it should have the red on it. Right there. And then we can... I don't know. I think it's fine without that. Um, now we need to shade the head. This is a top hat. There you go. So, he yeah, has a top hat. And maybe with the top hat, it'll look more like he's wearing a bow tie. So, uh, so there's like a couple ways I can do this. Um, I'm gonna like just set up another thing right here just so I can see what I'm like what it looks like with a background because the 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 black flowing into the actual black background here is creating different visuals than you would otherwise see in the game your brain it, assumes different things about what those pixels mean based on what the background is um, okay so let's try this again so we have a couple options can do that. Can do that. Um, can do like that. Actually, that one might be the way to go. Do that. I think this one's the way to go. I like that one. And then, yeah, there's no way to make that look okay. 
so let's move that and we'll put in that one pixel right there. I just spent how many minutes on one pixel? <laughs> Game development things. All right. Um, so that's the, that one. And then uh, I could probably change their colors a bit too. Like I could make um, I could make one of them brown, or I could make uh, this one could be like a darker rabbit or something. So I could take like this color, or then go up color, and then that's all of this. So this is the darker rabbit. And take this color, I'll change that. And then this color. There we go. And then um, I'm gonna make this next one brown. Wait, uh, so this should probably be the body. So that goes like this. Now we get one up and then do that. And that's oh we need one darker too. For the neck. Alright. So that's her brown rabbit. Um And actually, I'm gonna swap these real quick. For this rabbit, I'm gonna give this one a dress, and then this one's going to be um, the the uh, the magic rabbit that tells you where things are. Um, where is the? What color should it be? Should it be blue. I think blue. Uh, all right. bit tricky. How does this work? Could move this up that and then do that thing. And then we grab some different colors here. Was I using the lightest one or this one? I was using that one. Okay. So this needs to be darker. And then uh I like The way to do this is to like, uh... Mm. We have another color I can work with here. I could use gray, because it's technically not in use. Uh, or white. I think it was a lighter color. That uh, doesn't. It blends too well. Uh, purple? Or. Actually, I could use white down here, I guess. Like that. Uh. Whatever, I think I'll just. I leave it like that. And then Hmm. I think it needs more color though. That's the problem. It just looks like a blob. Uh 
that help? Maybe. I don't know. I think I'll leave that for now, and then I can just come back to it later. Uh, so the last one needs to be wearing robes. And then, like, a wizard hat. So I'm gonna draw the wizard hat real quick. Uh, what color should the wizard hat be? I'm thinking like this. Oh wait, should I give him a beard too? That would be funny. So three of the rabbits are wearing hats. Wizard hat. <laughs> wait, actually, I, I did that the wrong spot. It was here. Wizard hat. Wizard hat. Uh, that's off balance, so I need to fix that. Um, wizard hat. Should I like just make it curly just for the fun of it? That that's funny. Yay. Uh. Um, so there's the wizard hat. Now let's color the wizard hat. Uh, well, first of all, he needs some shading on his face because, uh, that. No. Oh, wait, you know what I can do? Maybe, does this work? Can I just, like, no, it doesn't work. Never mind. Um, I think the wizard hat should have some black in it. So kind of like that. And how to do this? I guess I can just like do standard shading. I'm cautious with standard shading because I want the the pastel look needs to look a bit flat. I think I've worked with these colors before, or it's like similar colors before, and you do have to be careful. Uh, blends a bit. I don't like that. Um, anyways, let's give this guy a beard. So, problem is, is he's already gray. <laughs> so how do you give him a gray beard? Uh... Oh, I could give him like a comically large beard. I think that's what I should do. Um, let's give him a comically large beard. So it goes like. Would it be darker? I'm gonna do like this color. So it would be like this. And it needs to like pile up on the floor. So that, that, now I have to make sure that looks like a beard, which would be tricky. I might have, uh, there's a decent chance I have to remove this just because it's not going to look like a beard. Yeah, I don't think that's going to look like a beard. I mean, I could tweak it to make it look more like a beard. Uh, the problem is that he's already gray. I guess I could make him. Hmm. Should I use a completely different color so that the beard can be gray? Or uh, maybe I just give him a tiny beard. Like that. I don't know. Uh, can you just do. I think that's like close enough. Um. I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. All right. So those are the characters. Um, 
you play as this one. These are the three that you're doing the quests for. Um, and then this is the, the one that gives you the, um, uh, the maps. All right. Uh, win VR game. I don't know. Uh, I have a lot of other stuff I want to work on first. Um, so probably not in the next two years, but maybe after that. Um, I do play a lot of VR games, so that it's, I probably will at some point. Um, uh, a Ninja Rebel would look cool. Um, I don't know if that fits the aesthetic that well. Um... What about a Zootopia Easter egg? No. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, the, the Lucid, the game that I was showing earlier, you're a rabbit collecting eggs. Funny. Um, this is, is the real game sun quick. Essentially. <laughs> Game's made quick. Um, I mean, if I have time, maybe I can put like an egg somewhere. Which would be an Easter egg to the game that it's a reference to. <laughs> um, uh, what? Uh, what was the live stream? What? Oh, you mean live stream? Wait, what? Um, is Pi Game performance good for medium graphics RPG Zelda game compared to platformers? What? Uh, you can do like top down game games like Zelda, like the original ones, not the. You can't do the 3D stuff like the modern ones, but yeah, the original ones, they work fine. There's someone in the Pi Game Discord server that's um, been doing that. Uh, make him wear glasses. Okay, but would he wear glasses? Or would he be like an old guy that doesn't, that can't really see and doesn't even bother to wear glasses? I feel like he wouldn't wear glasses and you just can't really see anyways. Um, all right. What game am I working on right now? Let him dare. Um, Alright. So now, um, with this, I can get to 8 by 16. I can draw the tile map. So, I'm going to do some... This is the brown, I guess. Um, do I do 12 or 16? I think I do 6. Maybe 14 is the right size. I think 14 is good. 14 by 14. The unusual tile size. Um, Alright. Um, I'm just gonna do, do some grass stuff here. And then... Where's the darker thing? Actually, the way to do this... You just... Like, I'm just gonna speed run my standard grass techniques real quick here. <laughs> I spend so much time drawing grass for my different games. Um, and this is, uh, I need this one. This is gonna be a bit more bubbly grass. Um, all right. Uh, that looks a bit washed out. All right, let me put the this contrast might help here. I don't want going all the way around. That doesn't look good. No. Um, let's smooth this out a bit. And then... Okay. There we go. 
Um, if this is bubbly, I should probably not do that. I should put it on. See like that. There we go. Um. And then. I'm going to use a little trick here. It's good for making... I learned this from a game called Catbird. Wait, hold on. I like... I think that, that lines up, right? Yeah. So now... Do this. Wait a second, that's not right. Alright. So you do that double layer, and then you color this in. And then... That looks nice. Now, let's see how this tiles. Is this going to be... I think this is a very different looking... It's going to look quite a bit different from a lot of my other games, I think. Uh, there we go. So, that's the grass. Um, I do need to turn this into a full tile set, which means... Uh, gotta do this. Uh, I'll, I'll do spacing it too. So I gotta carve these. Actually, the way I normally do it is I just do one, and then I'll... Uh, <laughs> that actually might be all I have to do here. There you go. Let's do that. And then... Well, so... The other thing I have to change is this pattern right here. So that has to go... Uh, I want it to... I want it to pop out a bit. Like, make a more rounded corner, like this. There you go. Now, with that... I can do... This. We copy, we flip, and we get ourselves... The top part. Now... We need another 14 by 14 of this for the side tile. 14 by 14. There we go. All right. Um, so I can just kind of do like whatever squiggly pattern I want here. And then I have to copy it over here. And then we fill that in. And um, let's add some texture as well. Uh, this is one of the things I didn't like about Godot was that overflowing tiles like this was difficult to do. Um, actually, hold on, let's do that. And then we do a long one right here that connects up to there. Uh, and we can do it like that. Maybe, like, no. Do that and that. And then we can do that. Uh, maybe? Wait. Uh, I don't want that. Do that. And get that out there. And then that would imply that I would have to do something over here. So we do that. So it's like three, two, three. Let's say three, two, two. There we go. Now that it has some texture, we flip that. And that's that. We just need our 14 by 14 to go right here. And then this one will be that color. And then for the bottom, I have all the tricks for speed running tile creation. <laughs> you just copy the middle row, and then you just uh, curve out the bottom. Like that. 
Um, and then a lot of times you can actually keep the pattern because uh, you want it to be darker. And then you can do something like um, take this color maybe. Uh, I'm concerned about using this because it's supposed to be the black. Maybe I'll use another black. Uh, and then this can be uneven if we want. And then there we go. So that adds some unevenness, but that's fine. Um, that will be our grass tile set. And now, actually, you know what? I want to add some ramps as well. So for the ramps, it's um, just to smooth out the terrain a bit. Um, all I gotta do is take one of these and we, uh, why is YouTube telling me to put in ads? <laughs> just made a blue pop up out of the corner of my eye telling me to put in ads. Um, where'd this come from? I don't want that. All right. So let's take this and uh, I'm just gonna make two picks. We're probably gonna be more. So the the thing you have to be really careful about here is the way that this mixes with um, other uh, the way it mixes with um, other tiles. So. Unless I want to implement a weird corner tile for like bordering ramps and stuff, I, I have to be careful about how I handle these corner pixels. Otherwise, it'll look weird. I'll show you in a moment what I'm talking about. Um, I'm gonna add some just dangling bits here and here. Be very careful not to go too far. Um, so. Actually, here, I'm going to set this up so I can figure out how I'm going to do with the pattern. So what you end up with is... Oh, not that. I get this. I get two of these. And then you get one of these. And then the ramp's going to go, like, right here. How did I mess that up? Is the ramp not wide enough? Is that what I did? Yeah, it's 13 by 13. Oops. Um, so, I'm gonna stretch this up here. Actually, I'm gonna go down instead. There we go. So, I'll take this, which is now properly 14 by 14. So, here's what you have to be careful about. I can only go, like, there's this corner right here that I can't do anything about. It's just gonna have to look funny, unless I want to implement corner tiles, which I don't feel like doing. Um, so, I, this is the best pixel arrangement for what I have to do here. Um, actually, I need to put this back. So, I have to deal with... Um, I think the way to do this is to... Taking the color, like, is it? Because it's like right here. Actually, I can already trim it down. Uh, so this is like level right here, so I get that. And actually, I'm gonna curve it down. Like, just to do that. Uh, I think that's what it's going to look like. Looks like a weird pattern here. I think once I put it over onto the side, though, it'll look correct. Yeah. So that looks a bit better. So the next step, uh, shade this stuff properly. So we get essentially what are two bubbles here. Remember, this is a bubbly type of grass I'm doing. We got, uh, there we go. I'd rather not touch the surface too much. So we get that. 
and there we go. Um, I'm gonna cut this in here a bit just for some variety. All right. Um, let's see how this looks. Oh yeah, the, the the music right now. This is a funny track. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's just a strange track. Anyways, um, I think that should look all right. I'm really tempted to do the corner tile. I think I'm gonna do the corner tile. Uh, I don't like the corner tiles. But because the other thing that happens is you get this with a um. Where is it? You can get a wall right here that goes like this. And then you have this one corner tile right here. And then you're like, what? <laughs> so, I make that corner tile. So that will be a, um, you get two pixels here, you get pixel there. So this is down one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me do the one right here, and then just do that, pretty much, and then maybe cut out. A bit of stuff like right here. Ah. So that would be the corner tile. Just continuing the pattern. Uh, I can actually also add some grass in the corner just to smooth it out a bit. So what we're looking for is probably like this. Just a tiny bit of grass. This was there. And then now, our corner tile, look at that. And then that should also fix this too. Yep. Um, so, I don't like how that goes straight into there. I think I'm going to try to curve this around a bit. So that would go there and there. It's violating some of the rules that I'm using, but I think it's all right for the ramp. So we put this back here and it looks a bit janky, but uh, gets the job done. <laughs> Cause the corner tile has to work for both the ramp and the wall segment. So it's a bit tricky. Um, I, I, think, I think that's good enough. So now, with those done, I can remove these. I just have to copy this, flip it, and then this one goes. There. That's actually technically for there. Copy, flip, and there we go. So that should do the job for that tile set. Now I need a rock tile set. And I think that should be good for the tile sets. And then I can go into like grass and foliage. Um, uh, okay. I see you guys are just having a conversation in there. Um, I think I'm too far behind on that conversation to give any input. Um, you're saying, oh wait, Pygame has none of that. What are you talking about? Uh, you know, freight framework stuff. Uh, uh, oh, Monogame. Okay. Interesting. My um, framework that I'm using for this game, Pigpen, which you'll see when I actually finish the artwork, um, has a lot of that stuff. Um, but that will be later. So, um, for the tiles, I just noticed that the, uh, the, the chat doesn't work well. I noticed that YouTube changed the chat but I guess it doesn't show up on stream properly. 
which is odd. I don't know why. Let me see if I... Let me just move this around. Nope. It pops up for like two seconds and then disappears. It's the strangest thing. Um, what if I turn off the CSS? That's a dangerous thing. But let's, let's see what happens. Properties. Uh... Oh, I used so much CSS. I'm not gonna touch that, actually. You guys can deal with the messages just popping up for like two seconds there. <laughs> I need to fix my, um, I had a thing for the, like my own plugin that used the API to, to get the, to make a custom UI for the chat that looked nice, but, uh, it had some bugs. Anyways, um, oh. So I'm gonna do the rocks. The rocks should be gray. Um, I'm going to. This is where I'm going to copy a little something from Lucid. Um, so it had like stones. So it had stones that were like um, different sizes. Actually, I'm going to do the stones, and then I'm going to do um, a maybe a brown rock. So 28 by 28 is the big one. Okay. And then you can do uh, just give it a border, both of them. Ah, I missed. Alright, so they both have a border. And then we do this. Just soften the edges a little bit. And then we want to add more shadows to towards the top. Actually, maybe I can do this too. Can I like weight it towards the top? So it gives it like some dimensionality. That's fine. Yeah, I like that. So we get those. And then from here, I can maybe texture these a bit. And. So we just keep texturing and then. There we go. Uh, so that's the top part. Now we gotta do the interior. Uh, actually, I can probably shade this, shade the sides a little bit, just a little. They don't have to be symmetrical. There we go. Um, now, you can grab a darker color. There we go. So, what I'm thinking, we just like do this, and then we take this color, we dump it in the middle and the bottom, and then we do this unfortunately this is gonna make it look a little bit shiny all right uh we do that which will soften it and then it looks kind of like a window um Now for this part, can I just, I might be able to get away with just doing something like that. So, um, actually I think it needs one more pixel right there. All right. 
Um, and then for this one, I can do some bigger patterns. Uh, actually, I could do... What happens if I just paste it in the middle? What does this look like? Eh. So, I'm going to do just kind of like a standard brick looking pattern. Actually, uh... Actually, the easy way to do this is to just dump that in ahead of time and then just uh, grab this. And then... Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Um, and I think, can we copy this? Maybe. Let's see what happens. Uh, almost. Seems like a couple rows cut off. There we go. So it can be copied though. Let me just close that off, I guess. Or just do that. That's good enough. Um, now we have to smooth it out a bit to get some nicer shapes to look a bit more eroded. Alright, and make that one stick out more, and do that, and then, especially near the edges, I'm gonna curve it in. That looks like a nice wall. So we can dump those in the train wherever. Um, and then... What else? I'm gonna actually pull up... Uh, so some of the other things I can do are... Um, actually, there's not a whole lot. I could use some, uh, what would look nice? So I have the brown, the gray. I'm tempted to do a dark color. Um, all right, so this is going to be an interesting tile set. This one's not going to have any ramps. So the only ramps are going to be on grass. Uh... So this is probably going to be like a rock formation type of thing, but it's going to be very low detail. So... Uh, and by rock formation, I mean unnaturally brick looking. And 
now we do a little bit of forming. Not sure if that'll look a bit out of place or not. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I can adjust it pretty easily. Um, we'll see in a bit. I can start putting things together in the level editor, which I have not used on a stream before, I don't think. Um, and then we'll get a good idea of if it's fine or not. So, next tile, working with 14. That. And then we just need to do some shaping. It's just boop, boop. And that's that. Rotate, flip, there we go. Um, and then we just grab this, drop it down there, shave it off. And that's that. I'm tempted to maybe add some lines through it. Um, I could use this color and then do a little bit of... Just do a little bit of that. There you go. Do something like that. And then copy, flip. And then we do This one takes a bit more time to get through because it's just three pixels wide. Uh, oh no, slightly more work. There we go. I do like that, I think. Um... It's a bit iffy using the color that's supposed to be black in the tile set, but it should be fine. Um, should I add background tiles? It's tempting. I probably will. So I'm gonna just draw it flat like that and then we can texture it so we go. Uh, I forgot. Just connect them. And then that has to be like that. Now we use the funny trick. And then we carve this off. And uh, that one's done. All right. So I could start throwing these into a level to see how it looks. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I think if I want to add anything else, I think I might add a different type of box. Um, so I want a plain box. Fourteen by fourteen. All right, now we just go and grab, say this color. Nope, that's the same color, wrong color. Get this color, just do the corners. Um, actually, do background tiles? Uh, okay, I will. You'll see, 
Um, if you see my game Super Potato Bra, I use them there. Um, I kind of use them in DDA, but different extent. So this one's gonna be, it sticks out in the middle. So we can, uh, that's not what I want. want uh, maybe this one. I think that's too obvious. It looks too textured if I do it that way. Um, so we just, And I think that should do it. Maybe? I think maybe just a little bit more darkness to it so it doesn't look too different from the other tile. Ah, wait, hold on. Just do it around the corners like that. And maybe... I don't know how I feel about that tile. Uh, what if I just like do a bit of... I think that will make it work. Just like do this. And then all I gotta do now Oh uh, yeah, that's what I want. I don't think I need it on all parts, but... Yeah, there we go. Interesting tile. Um, I probably put a little bit of shine on it. So this one's gonna stick out a bit. Uh, I gotta be careful how I use that one. Actually, maybe I'm thinking to take off the shine. Alright. So let's see what I can make with this. Actually, no, I'm gonna do the background tiles first, because you guys want that. Um... So background tiles. So this is gonna be tricky because I've already used a lot of dark colors. And the background colors, the background tiles need to be a flat dark color. Um, so I'm gonna use this. Uh, the way these work, it's actually basically just this. Can I just like, I'm going to cheat on the background tiles. Um, Watch this. Alright. Now I can take these and flip them. There we go. So that's gonna be some tacky background tile stuff. So what I can do here to make this more unique in form is cut some shapes into here. Um, and then you just kinda put up some bumps like that. And then uh, you can do whatever you want really with these shapes. Uh, and then you just, uh, actually I'm going to flip this. Actually, no, it's better to not flip it because, um, 
you get a more unique shape that way. For something that takes so little effort to draw, it's fine to just not flip it. There we go. So now, for these other ones, it's gonna look really ragged, and that's the goal. some corners there and then um, just gonna chop these out Make it look rocky. And there we go. So it looks kind of like shredded something or other. Um, but it should tile, which is important. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more texture to the top here. This. One's not gonna have too much, but I would like a little bit. There we go. So, now that we have that, uh, time to start dumping this into tiles so I can start having some fun with level editing. Um, uh, reading chat real quick. Although, as is normal with my bigger streams, you guys seem to talk to each other and then there's not that much for me to comment on because one of the difficulties with streaming game development, especially in game jams, is I have to focus on the game a lot more than the streaming aspect. So um, it's just like it's just hard to keep up with chat. I can't read everything, especially right now. Um, what am I making? Uh, it, uh, a game where you go collect items for NPCs. Um, all right. So, I'm gonna throw this into a level. Actually, I'm gonna throw this into sprite sheet first, and then, um, oh, let's see, paint. And let me just pull, like this. Uh... So, the way this works, I actually had a tool for this, but I didn't update it for the current version. Um, do I start top left? I think so. So, I start top left. And, oh wait, I made my thing way too big. Let's, let's see if I can just, like, I, I'm, eh. there we go. So, start top left, do this. And, there needs to be a gap of two between them. And you just kind of go around in a loop. Uh, so I'm gonna need a lot more space below. All right, almost there. It's uh, five of them. Four more. This goes around in a loop. Um, and the reason the ordering is important is because I have an auto tiler, which cares about. I mean, I could configure it to use whatever order I want, but I don't want to rewrite the configuration. I will have to update it to use the corner tiles, though. Uh, here we go. Uh, can I get larger, larger? So, last one for the main set. The ramps will be in another set because I don't want the auto tower to mess with that. The ramps will be put in completely manually. Um, so we get. Wait, that's not right. I need this one. So we do the left one, and then we need the right one, which is right here. Uh, I think I needed one more pixel. Yep, there we go. So now I have to mark this stuff out 
with Cyan. Um, and my sprite sheet loader will detect the boxes and load these uh, properly. I don't like to use a like grid based, um, like a, a strict grid. I don't like to use a strict grid based uh, thing for tiles because um, if I want tiles of varying sizes, you run into problems. So instead, I would just mark it out like this. I can also go horizontal too, the, the thing will understand it. Uh, but um, for the auto tile where it's nice if it just only goes vertical. Alright. So, this will be my. Uh, first sprite sheet. So I'll call this one um, Grass. It's, it's an iffy name. I'm mm, I have to be careful about that with some other stuff. Anyways, um, well, I'm gonna put this back, and then I'm gonna grab this, and then I'm gonna go over and start dumping this tile set in. So this one should be oh huh oh i grabbed a bit of I grabbed an extra pixel there let's see so this one should be the same dimensions which makes everything easier um and then Bottom. Nope, wrong window. Bottom left. All right, and then we get the center. Now we do. Oh, there's no corner tiles. So we just crop that off, and then this one is going to be our dirt. Durst. Dirt. <laughs> um, next, we have the background tiles. These ones are fun. Um, these. Uh, Should I use? I'm, I'm gonna use the same dimensions on everything here just to save me some. Because I also have to like uh, fill in the information for like what the tile offsets are for the oversized tiles so it knows how to place them. So I'm just gonna try to use the same thing for everything. So like this one is gonna be 15 by 15. And then we get this one. I say the tiles are 14 by 14, but in reality, a lot of them are bigger than that. It's just the grid is 14 by 14. Um, all right, almost there. Uh, my neck's starting to hurt. All right. And then the last one's the same for both. Um, so we save this as back dirt. <laughs> How creative of a name. All right, so for this last part, I'm just gonna wipe that out and we just grab these two things. Uh, oh, wrong one, there we go, right there. And then this one can go right here and we'll make that bigger, we'll do that. Shrink that down and draw our wait our rectangles, and then this will be a stone file. Save as stone.png. Now you guys get to see the level under the file. Wait a second, that needs to be saved. It definitely needs to be saved. <laughs> Um, so this is probably not going to work first try, uh, actually, maybe will it? Maybe, we'll see. So, does it even know? Huh? Excuse me? That is such a, what? 
<laughs> How does that... That's an issue... So I tried to load the entirety of Pigpen, and then this is a text box thing. Tilt the height. Oh, wait a second. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna go grab something real quick. Did it? Yeah, it didn't make those. So this, yeah, this is uh, gonna be a problem. So this is, well, first of all, it's 14 by 14, not 146, 14. Uh, that'll be data, images, sprite sheets, slash, and, uh, oh no, just there. So let's just start that up, see if that changes anything. So, why on earth is it trying to do that? We have line 38. All right, time to do a bit of debugging. My library thing, got my, well, my framework thing has some bugs in it. Uh, utils? Or would this be UI? Text box. Oh, this is for like text input. Line 38, right here. So it's that font. Font comes from there. So e text. Uh, why is it trying to make? Because this only happens if you. Wait, oh, I do. I do use those, don't I? Oh, you know what? I don't think it knows where the, uh... Mmm. So the awkward thing about this is I think it expects the fonts in a certain location. There, there are some right there. Let me see what I do in my other stuff. Yep, there it is. Uh, I'll just copy this in. I'm not gonna... Wait. Data. Images, wait, no, not images. Uh, we go into editor assets, and there we go. So now we have our fonts right there. So that's a, I need to fix the way that bug shows up. Anyways, so this is a level editor. So just to see what things look like. Um, the way this will work, I think, um, there's a couple ways I can do this. Well, first of all, do I even have the auto tiling set up properly? Maybe. No, I wouldn't. Hold on. So I have to load it the first time. Then it generates a bunch of config files, which are going to be over in uh, here. So now all of these have config files. If I go into here, into the auto tile stuff, and I can say, um, I think I do, like for example, this will be um, back dirt. We'll use the basic mapping and then uh, dirt will also use the basic mapping but then um, I need another mapping for with corners <laughs> um, so uh, this one I'm, I'm gonna leave it the way it is for now I'll adjust it if it's working but um, I'll say grass basic with corners. I have to adjust the configuration for that so that it actually puts in the corners, but for now we'll just see if it's working as is. So we just grab this one, we do that, fill it in auto tile, and it works, cool. Um, let's try the other ones real quick. So we grab this, we do this maybe, fill that in, auto tile, that looks correct. And then we wanna grab this one, and go, whoop. And how does this one look? I'm curious. Yeah, that one has a strange shape to it, but that's fine. Um, now, um, now that that's working, we need to get the actual... I'm not going to do this. the rest of that notepad plus plus. I'm going to go over and do it in here properly in VS Code so you guys can see it a bit better. And also so I can see it a bit better because the cards in notepad plus plus are not pleasing to me. Uh, I, that's configurable techno yeah, technically, but I haven't bothered to do it. Anyways, so, this is what it looks like. 
Um, I have this weird thing for handling tuples because Jason doesn't support tuples. So I have this, like anything prefixed with this gets converted to a tuple when I load it. I have like a, a tuple JSON loader that can take a normal JSON file and swap the tuples in. Because um, it's useful to use tuples as keys. Anyways, um, so just, when you see this, just think of this part. This is all that matters. It's just a tuple. Anyways, uh, so this is how this works. Uh, it looks at all the neighbors. So I can put in a list of neighbors that I want to look at. So the thing I have to look for here, um, let's add in the last two. I need to find the actual placement on them. So we go over here, you zoom in a bit. So you see the last two are what we have to add our rules for. So I'm gonna paste those in, and then this will be eight and nine. Oh, not eight and nine, nine and 10. Um, so from here we get, um, the first one, it needs to look for itself to the right, but it needs to look for itself in all directions, actually. Uh, and then, the thing it has to see is that in the top left, so that'll be negative one, negative one, it needs to see it not self. That means that usually that there's air or something else there. Um, but then to the top right, what would it need to see? It needs to see self. So one, negative one, self. Uh, I don't wanna click that. So now I can copy this and use this for here. I don't remember if they all have to have the same length of rules or not. Um, I'm not gonna mess with that too much here so this is going to be actually no that's the one that's uh the top left one this is the top right so this is going to be self and not self and then for the rest of these it'll be uh oh it varies um let's see so for the top this is the top left tile this should be not self for oh boy I'm gonna see if it works as is. This probably won't work. We'll see. Oh, it does work as is, that's cool. So if I do like an L shape like this, you should see like it pop up in the corner. So you get the corner tile right there. So that's nice. Um, I think that should do the job. Um, and then the other ones, of course, follow their own rules. Anyways, so I could make a map here. I think what I'll do is make it just a rough thing, maybe for testing, and then I'll uh, do the rest of the artwork. All right, so let's grab the grass, and we do... I don't know. Didn't need to be that big, I guess. Let's shrink it down. So, um... Uh, trying to think of how I want it, how I want this to be shaped. So, let's just do this and this for now. And... Actually... What I want. Did I not add a delete key? I surely added a delete key, didn't I? Control D doesn't do it. Control X? What is it? <laughs> I actually it's a uh, it would be in editor assets. Uh, editor keys. So is there a delete? A uh, remove mouse through. Well, no, that's not. Optimize, you select, layer down. Is there really not any? Did I seriously not add a delete button for the selection? It would be under control. 
layer up, layer down, custom data, grid toggle, layer toggle, select, left control, just like that. Wait a second. Is there a delete and a remove? Did I really do that? Oh, I should not have closed that. I just deleted everything. Um, so, delete, delete. <laughs> okay, so it's not bound. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. Camera right, sh it should be on D. So that's 100. So we say, delete, button, 100. All right. So theoretically, hello phone. Why is it, there's not even a new note. Oh, there is. Hold on, one moment. Okay, my mother was texting me. <laughs> All right, um, so theoretically, if I select and do control D and it, okay. I don't know why that wasn't in the bindings. I don't, I think it's just not in the default bindings or something. So I'll leave and I'm not gonna bother with that right now. Anyways, so we need to make, um, can I, is there not a silence thing on my phone? Oh, there we go. Now she shut up. All right. Um, now, I can do... It needs to be too big. I want these parts to be on a different layer because I can go... Did I just go above? I want it to go below. So let's turn on the layer thing so I can see what I'm doing. So we do this. And then we get that. And do that, cut those off. And uh, now, uh, so it already looks better. Let's put some of this in here. So I'm gonna put this like right here. And we do that. What the? No, that's not what I want. Like this. There we go. And then we can go a layer below. And then do like something like this. Fill that. Do that. Go below. Actually, not above. And then we do that. And then we add some of these in different places. Um, this one's a bit tricky because it's an oversized tile, but it should have physics. Um, there's some hacks I can do to just deal with that, but um, let's just go to layer zero and actually I should be behind, I guess. Uh, I can do this, I guess, or um, let's put it above. Did it really? That's funny. Okay, uh, time for my secret whip. Oh, that's why. Um, I'm on the same layer. Need to be above. There we go. Now that'll work. Um. Now I can grab one of the, the small one and then start doing details like that. And then over here. We go above like this, and we can do some fun stuff. And... All right, 
Um, there we go. Check out that. Look at all the depth. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about... Uh, I think it's fine, I guess. Um, I think actually I need to do... Go like that. There we go. I like how that looks. So you can save that. Um, and then we can do some background tile stuff. This will be fun. So, go behind everything. Let's go to like negative layer, negative 10. Um, and then you just kind of just draw wherever you want it. And you go, wee, wee. Uh, you have to be a bit careful about the shapes you use, but. Now, I just do this, and there we go. How's this looking? There we go. I like how that looks. Um, what next? I guess I'll save this. Um, I mean, I could... Uh, what, what should I do at this point? Oh, I should uh, throw in some ramps, actually. Oh, I forgot the ramp tile set. That's important. So I'll save that, and let's create the ramp tile set real quick. So for that one, we also have to do tile offsets, because uh, technically things are off by a few pixels um, in the editor and in the game if I were to implement that. But um, let's grab this, and we zoom in. And we just have to do these couple tiles here. So, uh, actually, I'm gonna start this one from scratch. Uh, so we take, uh, take that, zoom in here, drop that there, and then we get our two ramps. Now we just gotta shrink this down, and. Do the borders. All right. File, save as, and then we can call this one ramps. No, I don't want it all caps. <laughs> Hold up. Ramps. There you go. Um, so we have that. Uh, let me start this up and it'll generate the config. So the ramps have no, um, there's no offsets I have to deal with. The rest of these will have the same offsets. So, um, hold up, I might be able to cheat on this real quick. Let me see something. Uh, so if I go over to one of my existing projects, uh, let me see if it, sprite sheets, green grass, just take that, dump it in here. <laughs> um, so the offsets, uh, negative one, negative one, uh, did I not? So this tile set, does it not? Oh, it doesn't overflow to the left. Okay. That's not what I'm going to do. So take this back, and then this one should also be negative one, because it's the first one. Second one's just negative one vertically. Third. This is the left side. Left side, okay. Um, I think this config should work for everything. So, 
Uh, let's close that extra thing there. Just boop and boop. And all of our stuff should be aligned. The stone does not need it. Um, the back dirt does need some other stuff though. Uh, is it flags? Hold up. Uh, gotta pull up some more references real quick. I wrote this stuff and I don't remember the names of the different arguments. Um, yeah, it's flags and it's just um, an empty thing. And I have to do it for all of them. So flags. Empty. I do it for all of these. And then on top of that, so that's the first three. And then there's a bunch unlisted. T or T U zero 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 seven. No, uh, no seven three. Um flags and there we go so I need four five it's four and five is six seven I need eight which is the ninth tile ah there you go so this one's eight and then let's see if this loads. Okay, it loaded. Um, now let's pull up the, the map. And it should look slightly better, but not that noticeably different. All right, so let's throw in some ramps. Um, and there we go, there's some ramps to play with. And put one right here too. And just for the fun of it, let's put one right there. Alright, so there are now some ramps to play with on the map. Um, so I'll keep that as a test map, and then we can test stuff there when we actually get to doing things. But the next step is more artwork, yay! Uh, <laughs> The sus icon on license? It's some it's just some keys. You're seeing things. I totally have not snuck those into my videos before. Um uh, entering chat. What the heck is going on? Um speedrunning making a game. Uh I uh or I actually don't even know how to say your name. Hello. Um uh, elbow hit my sensor. Um, my love letter is impressive. Thank you. Um, it doesn't take too long to make, really. Actually, I think like you can see all the code right here. It's like 470 lines. It's not that much. Um, you can't finally catching a game jump stream. I do these like once a year, probably less. So, um. Because most of the time I do the game jams, I don't even stream it. So, yeah, it's a rare thing to catch. Uh, but, I mean, I'll be streaming tomorrow, too. So, um, how long have I learned Pagan for? Um, n almost 10 years now. Uh, you're about to watch a Pagan tutorial, but you guess you'll watch this. This is a lot more complex than a normal Pagan tutorial. Anyways, uh, no, I don't want that. No, no. Close. No. Really? There we go. Uh. Alright. So. We have two things of spreadsheets here. I don't need this one. I want this one. I go to images. And back to the drawing board. Alright. So. Things I need to draw. Buildings. I need different houses, I guess. And then I need, um... Foliage, and then this that the wizard guy needs a magic orb. 
Um, thinking about should I change this bow tie to red? Nah. All right. Maybe maybe white. No, I can't either because that conflicts with other stuff. That's the wrong color. So white doesn't work. I don't think. Actually, I think I like that. It, it does stick out. Um, so he's now wearing a white bow tie. Alright. So, I do need the uh, orb for the, the, the wizard. So we'll just stick it on a table. So for the table... Uh, here's your table, sir. And then we'll give it some legs. It's two pistols, right? Yeah. So, give it more legs. Uh, shade that there. And that's already a decent looking table. It's funny how much you can do with so few pixels. Um, so... Actually, if you want, here's a better thing to do. You do that, and you grab an even darker color, and you do that. That looks nice. Um, but, it's nice if this looks like wood. So now that we have our table, I think that's good enough, whatever. Um, now that we have our table, we can put our orb on it. So the orb uh, should probably have like a darker gray base. And then it's gonna look like a snow globe, I guess. Or wait, oh, I can make like a more special stand. So if you do something like this, it looks fancy. You, if if you're if the orb of your magician is being held by a stand like this, you know it's special. All right. So now we need to put an orb in it. Um, this is a bit tricky because it needs to be like glass, kinda. So let's start with a square. And then we round it out. There we go. Um, so the edges need to be white because it's glass. And then we can add some sparkling. Uh, there we go. That's starting to look like what I'm thinking of. Let's add some dark. And then for this, is this color? Yeah, it's that color. So I need this. So there's the orb. Actually, I don't know if I should even texture it that much. I'm tempted to leave it. Or maybe like... Do something like that, maybe. That looks a bit more fancy. Uh, maybe we can make the table look fancier too. Put um, color you use for this. I think red would be fine. 
take the red, just do that, and then you just like drape a um, some cloth, and then that looks fancy. Yay. Um, and then I would want to highlight the top here, probably. Let me if I raise it. That looks a bit strange, but I think I can keep that. All right. I like that. So now, um, that's the orb. We need uh, foliage and some houses. I think for what I'll start with is like one house, and then if I have time afterwards, maybe I'll add more. Um, so that's probably what we'll do. For the houses, I'm thinking like a lighter, almost yellow brick, maybe. Um, we can do. Doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna move some stuff here so I have some space. There we go. So it needs to be a decent size. I don't want the fat thing. So this should be good. And then I'm going to copy the house that I used for. Uh, well, actually, hold on. Gray for this. Maybe? Hmm. We'll see. Wait, uh, let's first put in some wood. So, some wood beams. Actually, it should probably be wider than that. Is that level? No, they're not. Must fix. All right. So first we need to like texture the edges here. And then we need a door. Is that too sh too small? Let's just grab the guy with the top hat. Is his top hat too tall to get through the door? Okay, it needs to be a lot bigger. Yeah. Um. It doesn't need to be too much wider, it just needs to be taller. Ah, missed. There you go. I think that should be big enough. I mean, like, Probably. I mean, they can fit in there. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just drag this up like that, and then we just do a little bit of that, and then that's definitely tall enough. All right. So from here, we need a roof of some kind. Um, I'm thinking maybe like hay or something. Hay looking stuff. So let's grab this color here. And let's just go... Just go around like that. And... Mm, 
Now I have to texture this to look like um, a tree of some kind, even though it's like hay. Like that and that. This is how you make it look like hay. Ah, messing up my shapes. I need some black. There you go, it's starting to look like hay. So this is going to be a lot of stuff hanging down right here. Uh, foliage, is, foliage type artwork is very tedious because you have to pay attention to the individual pixels so much. there. Looks like hay to me. So now we need to actually color it, kind of. So we have two shades here. We have this darker shade to work with. Um, so you gotta find a way to divide this, kind of. divisions, which is good. These divisions need to be somewhat leaf-shaped as well. needs some shadows to accommodate that. I'm gonna start with like a deep shadow to here and then I'll like shape it. Alright. So uh take this color. Probably this color too. And then we go boop. Boop. Alright. It's like that, and then like that, and like that. And then we want some definition in the shadows. Doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be one to one necessarily, but. Should contain many of the major features. Alright. Alright. That should be close enough. Now, for the rest of this. Um, I could probably put like a cross beam here. You just go 
Ooh. And cut off a little bit of the stuff. There. And I'd probably need a bit more. It's gotta be wider. Uh, my hand's starting to get tired. I, I don't like to draw <laughs> this much for games, but you kind of have to. Um, Alright, time to put some definition into this wood. Uh, is this the car I'm using? No, nope, it's one darker, which is what I need. So we could do this. And then we go up here. Put some shadow into this. Um, there we go. We have Unfortunately, there's no shade between there, which is what I kind of need. Uh, I'm just gonna color this in a bit. This is a tricky thing to draw with limited colors. And then maybe add some brightness. I can't. Um, so now I need to start defining the bricks in the shape here. So for that, I'm just kind of do this. So that's a brick pattern. Looks nice. Um, I'm gonna copy it to the other side. And can I get away with uh... that? Um, I think I did get away with it. It's not immediately obvious that they're just it's just rotated. So now we'll just put a few more things, so like right here, just put a little something. And don't want to connect them too closely because then you notice that they're not lined up. So that's starting to look nice. Um, I think these poles on the edges need to be... tall or wider. And then we can start coloring these. So I have to be very careful about how I do this. Because I can't touch the edge. be connected that much. Is there really not a shade between? I thought there was a shade between. Let me just double check that. Is this it? Oh, that's the one I need. So this one needs to go over here. And then I can do this. Nope, I don't want to zoom in.
Ah, just pop my neck. All right. This is just really sloppy wood. All right. Um. Uh, I should probably put some texture around here. Oh yeah, because it's not the exact same, I can do this now. I can touch the edge. Um... Alright. I'm liking how that's looking. Looks like a home. Um, I think that door needs a bit of a frame or something. Uh, or... At least just like... Like that, maybe. And also just add the line right here. Uh, I'm gonna move one pixel. There we go. So that's the house. Um,. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need to draw some fences as well, uh, but I do need to use the restroom real quick, and then I'll come back and read the chat. Uh, the magical notepad thingy. All right, I'll be right back. Hello. Um, let's see if my avatar's caught up. It's catching up. Uh, I'll get there in a bit. Um, what game image am I using? I'm not using any. I'm, well, I'm kind of using my own, but uh, it's on top of Pi Game. Uh, what is this car powered? I don't know. I got it off of a low spec and then modified it. Uh, the first guy looks like a toad. Wait. The first guy looks like a toad slash frog with white eyes, the ears, and a neutral smile. Hold on, I'll, I'll try and see that in a moment. Uh, let me see if my... There we go. Hello. Um... How is this a frog? Let me see if I can... Oh, I see it, I see it. But the, the, the angle to the, maybe if I took off the, I can see how you can see it like that, but with the spiky ears, I don't see it. Um, any tips for finding some work or interning in game dev? Uh, I have no idea because I, I don't, um, <laughs> I, I avoid working for big game dev companies because like, I, Look for jobs. I'm either freelancing, or uh, like just kind of contract work, working independently, 
or I'm uh, working like a normal software engineering job. I don't like to do game. Like I, I don't want to work for a game development company. Uh, how long am I making this game? Uh, so I'm gonna be working on it for well until 9 p.m. tomorrow. So I got uh, 10. Wait, not not 10, seven plus uh, 24 hours. So that's uh, uh 31 hours. Did I do that right? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and if you're asking about how long the game's going to take to beat, it's gonna probably be like 20 minutes. I don't know. Are people switching to Pi Game CE? Yeah, I mean, I'm using it right now on, um, but uh, I, I'm not gonna push it right in, look at this moment because um i'm waiting for there to be uh, more of a difference between the two anyways um but yeah so with the pack mce stuff um it'll probably be, be <laughs> it'll probably be that um i i recommend it for everything in the future but i'm just kind of waiting for it to be a bit more definitive um because there's uh i'm just gonna wait and see what happens um i have my own reasons for preferring ce like from a development perspective like look for like the way the development is being handled um but for the stuff that i actually recommend to other people i'm just going to recommend whatever's best um uh why not work at a game development company um they're famous for like crunch time and stuff like that. So like, you'll put in insane hours. The the pay is like half as much as a normal software engineering job. Um, so unless you really enjoy doing that and that's what you want to spend all your time doing, um, I wouldn't recommend it. It's very competitive as well. So yeah, I just kind of stay away from that. I mean, I could probably get in, and I know people have gotten in. Um, but I, I just haven't, like, I don't have any interest in that. I would also have to learn some other stuff, because obviously I couldn't get in easily with just Pi Game, because no big stuff is made with Pi Game. Um, uh, Hello, Jet Omnivore. Um, alright. So, we have our house. I need some fences and then probably some bushes and trees. So the cool thing about trees is that you can use the trees as the bushes. I think I can pull up an example of that. Hold on. Um, so if I go gleam to gleam shoom, which is what the bottom right of the screen is. Uh, oh, actually, I don't think you can see in here that I did that. Huh. Normally you can see that I did that. Whatever. Anyways. Um, so let's make some trees and bushes and fences and stuff. Oh, actually, I think uh, a wheat field would be cool. So I want to make some... Wheat. Actually, the wheat can just be a grass type. Um, so that that's easy. I don't have to actually draw that here. Um, so I need to draw the fences, which should be probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pixels tall. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then, so it should tile, which means that um, it needs to be 14 wide. Uh, which means 10 across in the middle. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then do 2 wide here at the end. And then that should... Uh, actually, I forgot. You don't want that. The way you do this is like this. It's a bit awkward, but that's just how it works. So you make two tiles when you're doing fences, so they tile nicely, and you can close off the ends. 
Um, I need to make sure this is 14 wide first. Yep, it is. We're good. Um, and then I'm gonna do some very basic shading on this. Doesn't need to be fancy. Um, there you go. I think that's what I'll do for those fences. Uh, maybe I'll uh, shade the bottoms a little bit. There we go. So that's what I'll do for the fences. Um, and then now I need, um, what else did I say I needed? Oh, the foliage. So that's trees and stuff. So if I mix in multiple colors of trees, um, I can make some nice looking stuff. Uh, actually, I'm not sure how well, well, how it would look in this. Anyways, let's do just a, I'm gonna just do one tree and then we can figure out what we wanna do about that later. So you know, we'll just take one tree like this, maybe. Oop. Let's be decent sized. And then you like fork it out like that. And then you fork it here and here. And then you close off the bottom. And then you fill it in. And we have our basic tree shape. Uh, now we, it's best to refine that a bit. There we go. And then we stick the green on it. Um, I think the way to do this, just gonna do this the sloppy way. Just draw a bunch of circles. So when you do this, you actually have a bit of a form to adhere to, to make your stuff look nice. Nope, there's a hole there. Can't have that. There you go. So now, get that we can probably just do that or something like eh. there we go so that looks I don't know how I feel about how it's a bit uneven so I'm gonna add another branch right right here and then we can add this All right. So we need to make this look like that in shape. So just go around adding this stuff. This is something I have to con concentrate on a fair amount, so it's actually pretty hard to, like, narrate what I'm doing. I don't know why I have to concentrate so hard on drawing leaves. It doesn't seem like something that would be too difficult, but for some reason it takes a lot of focus. Alright. best way to do that maybe like that now hmm 
Hmm. Almost there. There we go. So that's all the way around the top part. So now I just have this part left. Actually, wait. That's good enough, maybe. Is that good enough? Probably. I think the, the this is a bit tall, so I'm gonna cut that down. But the rest looks good. Actually, wait. There you go. So now I have to do the other colors in here. So there are parts that get different lighting. Now I can do the bright shading. Uh, actually, that's gonna be right here. up these leaves here and then I can start working on the interior ones well so the, they, need, they need some patterns on the edges that looks like leaves and not just sloppy shading um, so I have to be careful about that as well So that's that part. Um, just kind of place it randomly and then hope it looks fine. <laughs> it's generally how this goes. Um, Did not mean to do that. There we go. Draw. I like these. I like this shape. This shape's fun. The technical term is a cluster. Because apparently there are technical terms in pixel art. to add some shape on to this shading in on the interior here because it needs some uh, I think I'm gonna expand out over the dark is the way I'm gonna do that uh, 
Alright. It's looking okay. Looks acceptable. So the tree's almost done, so now I need to do the dark parts. Um, so this is, this can be a bit tricky. Uh, actually, I'm like, I just cut that part off and then cut this part off and then just go from there. So the cool thing is, uh, actually wait a second, uh, here's how you do this. You draw an entirely new section that goes like this, and then it makes your tree look more full. Alright, now I fold that in, and then it looks like a better looking tree. I, so one of the things I don't like about this pastel palette is that it makes everything look so flat. Like, when I'm clearly trying to make things not look flat in some places. So, I mean, I talked about earlier how you, you had to make things... Uh, like I had to keep some things flat because that's what makes it look good partially. But some things like trees, you don't want them to look completely flat, um, which is the, the the struggle. And that's why I don't use this palette often, or like the, these types of colors often. Um. So what I can do, hmm, I'll do the wood first, and then I'll see what happens from there. So the wood, uh, I can do, grab this, and then we just go, well, I'm gonna divide the tree. This is how I generally do this. I divide the tree based on the light areas and the dark areas. Um, so there's not gonna be a whole lot of light up here under the leaves, but, uh, so you get the light areas and the dark areas, and then you get the uh, the really dark areas, which are going to be like right here, and right here, and right here, and maybe a little bit right there, and right here. Color those in, and then maybe it like forks down the middle and it's dark right there. If it, to do that properly, you want it to be really narrow and fork out like that. It's a better texture. Um, and then over here, maybe we get like something like this. This is my standard tree shape. All right. So from there, this is where you start to texture it. So you can go into here and you carve out these little bark sections. And then then it starts to look like a tree. Um, I cut that. And then you can add more of them. This needs some stuff. You can actually add some stuff right there if you want to add more definition into the bark. And then 
maybe I'll add, well, hmm. So it needs to be something right here. I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight right there. There we go, that's a decent looking tree, I like that. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of definition to the bark right here. And then there is our tree. Um, yes, yeah, so this is the problem where <laughs> looks a bit washed out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the yellow and drop it all over the tree on the highlighted parts. Just to give it a bit more shape and reduce the washout. That on color. And then I can take this one and then put this here. And then for the next color, we grab the next color down and then we just skip that one color. And that should help, I think, in the color balance. Well, it looks... huh. I wonder if I need a color in between. That seems like what it needs to be. So we take this, we darken it a bit. And then shift it towards blue just a little bit. Ah, oh, yeah, that's what we needed. So that'll help a lot. Um, so I'm gonna add that as a color. Uh, leave that there. Actually, it's a bit saturated. Uh, and it's a bit green. That's the, the better in between. Alright. Um, and then another trick you can use is to draw just little bits sticking out there of the, the colors lower down in the palette. It adds a lot to the tree. It makes it look more 3D. Trees are a very in, like involved thing to draw. There are tricks you can use that I've seen people use, um, like shortcuts and stuff you can take to make things faster. Um, one specifically is where you draw a specific leaf pattern and you just copy it a bunch of times. Um, but I don't do that. Alright, so now what you can do... is, uh, hold on. What you do now is you grab this color, the dark one, and then you draw some stuff that really sticks out. Almost done. Wait a second. All right, very close to being done. So I'm gonna stick this out a bit more right here, just for some definition. And then I'll find another spot to stick out the green stuff a bit more. 
So let's go with like right here. I like this spot. And maybe we can do it also somewhere else like right here. There we go. I think I'll do it like that instead. There we go. And the tree is done. So that... Uh, I made a mistake here. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Gotta get this away from some of the other stuff. So the cool thing about this, which I'll show you in a moment, is you can use it for a lot more than uh, just a tree. <laughs> um, I think I want a second variant with some like maybe weird fruit on it. So I'm gonna copy that. And then maybe just put some dots on it. Like maybe red. So just like, we, we, we. 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 So just put them all over the place and then all right so with that now I just grab the lighter color Shock a plus on them. I think that should do the trick. And then maybe I'll grab like a really light color just to add a little bit of sparkle. Yeah, let's uh let's grab a way lighter color. Just add a little bit of Blending a bit with the tree, it might be fine, we'll see in a moment. Hmm. Oh, you know I just noticed, because of my foliage system, I can't use that. Uh, actually no, I can probably get away with it. It'll be a bit iffy, but um, it should be fine. Let's draw like a couple more, one or two. I think one should be fine actually. So I'm gonna put it right here. And then we just do our loop and our loop. Now we have that. Time to throw it into a sprite sheet so we can actually use it. Um, so we just fill that with black. Zoom in. Um, <clears throat> so we have a couple types of decor here. Uh, so the trees need to be in their own thing because that's just how my system works. So... Here's one tree. It's easier for me if I do it on the other window, just so I don't have to mess with the stuff over here too much. All right, so I grab this. We want it to be two pixels apart. I think that's correct. So now, no, not that one. We do the borders. And boom, we 
have a trees. So what I do now is I call this one foliage. And then we need to make another one. And then this will be the decor. So we get this, the table. Um, we get the fences. The fences can be like yeah, that. And then we need the house, which is the really big thing here. I missed a couple pixels. There we go. So now, expand this out. Uh, it's much bigger than I thought. So, we need one pixel on the left, two pixels above. And then we can do this, and this, and then we can start drawing our shapes. Oh, I made a mistake. So, two pixels here. All right, so this will be our decor. Decor. And something else I just noticed is that I forgot something. So on this one, I am missing this texture. So for that, I just gotta make it, I think, slightly bigger. And boop, 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 boop. Fixed. All right. Now I can start doing some drawing or, or level editing again. So I pull up the level editor, load the map. We need the previous one. So we take this. Where are we gonna put a house in here? Uh, da, da, da. We can make it wider and stick it over here, or we can try and put it like right here or something like that. So first of all, it needs to be behind a bunch of other stuff. So I can put it up right here, that'd be funny. And then we get our Let's put the thing right here. This is just for testing. The the real stuff's gonna look different later. Oh, these are tiny fences. Oh, did I not separate them correctly? I did not separate them correctly. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, hold up. They need this in between. There we go. That'll do it. And now that'll be two tiles instead of one. There you go. Ooh, I made another mistake on them. Their height, if I wanna easily place them, their height needs to be 14. Um, so right now it's seven if I remember correctly, so it needs to be double that. Three, four, five, six, seven. And then I just fill in these lines. And then that should do that. Let me just double check that size. 14 by 14, we're good. And then we just grab that, close that, run that, import, get that. I really should have made more space in this area. So we have, um, look at that. So let's just leave those there. I could use this one if I wanted, but I don't feel like it. Um, now we can do the trees. So, the way you do this is you 
put it off grid like that so it's in a nice spot and then this is where you do the funny tricks can I like I think I can just do this look at that It's obvious when you're editing that you're reusing stuff, but when you actually play the game, it's not as obvious. <laughs> Let's put the little bush here. Oh. Okay, that makes it that that's visually confusing. I need to move that. Um, I think I'll leave that. That looks good enough. Um, I might add more colors for the trees. That would be nice. Um, let's see. I think we're mostly good to go. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to have a bunch of houses or, and just other things scattered everywhere. And then you go to them, talk to the NPCs. So when you talk to them, the NPCs are going to have icons for their faces. Um, so I'm going to have to draw those. I also have to draw the items that you're collecting. And then I have to draw the maps of the area. The maps I can do last because that comes after I've actually made the game world. Um, and then... I think that should be mostly it, um, aside from animating the player. Um, I could, like I mentioned, add another type of tree, but that would be it. Um, here, I'm going to do something real quick. Watch this. So you see um, 61 tiles, uh, 611 tiles. I think it's control O. Actually, hold on. Uh, let me just save this really quick. Wait, no, it's not O, is it? What is it? Uh, da, da, da. Is it O? Why does that have to cover that? Alright. 121. It only appears once. What is 121? Is this it? Can I do this? No, it doesn't work. Uh, uh wait. What's, how do you revert? What is the reverse of Ord? Well, so it wouldn't be O. Uh, Z? X, Y, Z. Y? It's Y, okay. That's a weird binding, but it's because O was already taken. So I can select it all. So it says 611 tiles. I do. Control Y. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, how does this work? Optimize. Oh, it, it only does the current layer. So I gotta go. So I do Control Y here. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look how many tiles I already cut down on. Control Y on that. Control Y on that. Control Y on that. Control Y on that. Look at that. So from here, when I remove the layers, it all still looks the same. But now there's like two, only two thirds of the tiles that they originally were. It removed all of the ones that aren't visible normally. So and it does it um, based on what's in front. Um, like it visually goes through every single pixel essentially it does some um, masks for all the layers um so it's uh like just even off-grid tiles can properly block things and if the tile like sticks out from behind something else it's careful to not block that so it's it's nice um so it's like a pixel perfect thing for reducing tiles which is um a nice fa feature to have because i don't think that's a thing in most editors um what happened to the old tile editor? Uh, it's 
Uh, I, I just replaced with this. It's, this one's very similar. It just has some extra features. Um, uh, have you talked about inspiration? Yes, I did at the beginning of the stream, if you go back. Uh, uh, no, it's not uh, Kinter. This is just raw pie game. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, making game. All right. So we have this. Um, I could drop a player in it. Um, but before I do that, wait a second. I gotta see something real quick. How did I do? Did I do different foliage things for? Here, let me just check something real quick. Uh, I can't remember how the different color sets work with foliage. I might have to make another spreadsheet. Um, uh, uh, local game. So on hue flowing, I did multiple types of um, things. So wait. Huh. Okay. So here, if you look. They're all just like um, uh, in one sprite sheet, so I guess that's fine. I think there's a list somewhere where I'm like, uh, certain things are one way and other things are another way. Um, I'm not sure how that works with... I guess I'll figure it out. Anyways, um, ignored that. Back to this. Um, I have a little bit of artwork left to do. So, what are the items that these people are going to be missing? So the farmer, let's say he's missing his pickaxe. <laughs> I, I'll, they'll probably be like 16 by 16 images, I guess. So, um, let's do... Let's first of all make like a box just so that I know what I have to work within. Uh, 18 by 18 means the interior is 16 by 16. So I can copy this and then use this for the ah, I can use it for the three items, I guess. So first one's the pickaxe. So we just do uh, this going up like that. Oh. And then we need the uh, the steel part or whatever. And then that goes like this. I'll fill that out in a moment. And that goes like that. Actually, I feel like that might be a slightly inconvenient angle to use a pickaxe from. Uh, so we cut off two there, and then this one's cut off three. I think I need to make this shorter. And then I can make this poke through the top. It doesn't need to be that much, but... There we go. So now I can do the details. Ooh. So right here, there needs to be shadow and then probably right there. And then we need um, color here. And then we need to make the thingy shiny. So 
So the top is a lot more lit than the bottom. And we get the bright color. This is where we make it shiny. Here's our pickaxe. Um, so what is the next item that you have to find? And the way this is going to work is, um, I guess it'll also show in your, like an inventory, I guess, the items that you've collected. Um, the next item is for the Sea Loose's watch. Hmm. Did I release the map editor? Uh, on Patreon. <laughs> Um, alright, so we have, am I using LOD, is that LOD as in level of detail, um, dithering for the grass sprites or are they manually animated? Um, I'm not, maybe that's not what LOD is supposed to mean there, I'm not sure, but, um, I, I use um, my own system. It like splits up the image for well for fully. It just splits it up into the layers based on the colors, and then it animates them separately just by like, shifting them and rotating them and stuff. Um, for this, yeah. So this guy loses. Let's say he loses watch. All right. So, it's gonna be like a golden watch, I think. So... And... It'll like, come up like that. So there's the watch. Um, how do I want to do this? Uh, so the inside should be white. But the outside is colored. So I do that, and then I grab the white, and then this is that part of the watch, and then it needs its hands. So it has that thing in the middle, let's say it's like doing something like this. Uh, that is not a valid time, but who cares? No one will notice. Actually, maybe someone will notice, but... I think that's better. I can get away with that. Um, so we need, need to add the ticks in the, uh, thing here. Well, first of all, let's add a shadow to the hands. And then we need um, the the marks on the watch, different times. I think that I'll do it with just one pixel. So you get that, and then you get. It's not going to be pixel perfect because uh, I can't. <laughs> But, um, looks like a watch. Uh, and then I should probably shade the edges a bit, like right here. And then maybe make this brighter. There we go. And then we can add some shine to it. So let's make it nice and shiny. 
Which is funny because you're gonna find this watch in the ground. <laughs> Uh, these colors are so bright, man. And then maybe we can add like just a bit of some down here. There we go. So that's the watch. Um, and then what does the last character lose? Why do I use paint? Because uh, it's convenient. <laughs> do I use any kind of stylus? Um, I do when I'm drawing bigger things, but for this, I'm using my mouse. <laughs> uh, uh, core two E eighty four hundred. I've never heard of that. It's been three hours, isn't it? Three and a half. Uh, three hours, 22 minutes. We've been going for a while. Um, right. So what does she lose? She loses, um, hmm. I could make it like a ring or something, but then the, the farmer gets singled out for, uh, having the one thing that isn't valuable that he lost. <laughs> Um, uh, what is something of medium value? Slightly more valuable than a pickaxe and slightly less valuable than a watch. Uh, hmm. Or I could go the complete other end and just make it a flower. <laughs> uh, that, that would be confusing. That wouldn't make much sense because it's going to be flowers in the train. Uh, it's here. All right, bye. Am I going to use modern geo or just play a game? Uh, I will. I will do some stuff with shaders. Um. But uh. Oh, you know what? She's the one character that doesn't have a hat. What if she lost her hat? That would be funny. Um. What kind of um? Let's let's make it like a. Uh, could be this color. So, just like do that or something. And we just connect it like this. And then. Do a little bit of that. So it's just like um, a basic hat. It probably doesn't need to be that tall on the top. So like, maybe like that. Here you go. She will lose her hat. And then I guess I'll put a blue ribbon going through here. Is that is what you would expect to see. And the hmm, wait, uh, I'm gonna do this around the ribbon. And then on the top, that would need to get brighter, I think. Actually, no, it's already as bright as it can get. It's a bit awkward. So for that, then, I will just do a little bit of a trickery. So that is a hat of some kind. Uh, so I could go one shade darker on everything. So I could just go grab like uh, that and then just do this. 
I missed. This one doesn't shine like the other ones. But I can give it some highlights at least. There we go. Actually, no, the, the light's coming from above, kind of, so it should probably be more like this. Alright. Okay, just gonna do these last couple pixels. Ah, uh, wait, wait, hold on. I have an idea of how to do this. Boop, boop. There we go, that should do it. And then I will make the ribbon actually stick out a bit. So that is the hat. I should probably like fork it. This is a ribbon. There you go. So that's the hat. Um, can I like do that? No, it doesn't look right. Maybe I had a picture right there. So we have the hat, the watch, and the pickaxe. Those are the things you're gonna collect. Now, what is left? I think that's most of it. Uh, now I need to evaluate if I can make a tree of a different color. Because that is always nice to look at. Uh, hmm. Or just like, what else can I put in the game? I guess I can make some rocks. Like proper rocks. I'm gonna do what I did for another game where you just kind of just draw some spikes and that's that. You draw the spikes and then you can just put them in places. Gotta be careful with how you shape rocks. And this top one's a bit tricky. Should fill in. There we go. Actually, I don't want to fill it in like that. I want to use a darker color. Okay, this one? Okay, yeah, it's this one. Ah. And then. Right here, I can do a little bit of stuff. there and then that looks a bit strange I think I can keep that. It's uh, multi purpose. So that will be the rock. I 
It's a weird rock, but it's fine because these are moon rabbits. Um, so I'll use that. And then let's see if I can maybe do like a pink tree. Will that work? So we take this, we shove it up here, and then we start going through the pink colors. So this is the bright one. Boop, boop. All right, now we go to the next color down, which is this. And that goes over here. And that's that one. Now we'll go one more color down. And there's a lot of random things that I add up here that I gotta hit. Now there's just the dark color. There we go, now we have a pink tree. Look at that. That will add some nice variety. Should the house have movement in the hay? I'm gonna go with no for now. Um, all right, let's take this, get this into the foliage tile set, and then we'll see if we can get the player in the world and then I might take a break. Uh, get uh, images. So it's gonna be in here. Uh, get taller and drop it in. All right. So there's the pink tree, and now. Um, we got the rock, which I can, I guess I can throw it into a stone tile set or something, or, or uh, no, I have a decor tile set, don't I? Yeah, I do. So I can go over here. So, I just drop it right here, and then, do that. Alright, decor, done. Um, let's try and load the player into the game. Uh, for this, we go over to Entities, we can do Player, we call it a Player, we say Idle, and then we grab him, I need some, I'll give it two pixels of space in each direction. Um, so now we... Just dump it in an image, save it, images, entities, player, idle, and then we we'll call this one image zero.png. So I'm not gonna worry about animations yet. Um, I believe if I start, actually no, the level editor won't do this. Um, but if I start this one, this should generate the Yes, it did. I got the config. So from here, I go over to the offset and I say minus two, minus two. And then I want, how big do I want this thing to be? Uh, so the hitbox should be this big. So it's eight by 16. We go eight, 16. Um, looks good. So. Uh, let's just do a little bit of self dot player equals. Uh, well, here let me just 
create something real quick. New file player.py. Uh, and close pig pen. Uh, from dot pig or import dot pig pen as pp De uh, class player pp dot uh, element uh, wait no not no it should be nc now uh, physics entity in fact um, and then we say def itself super dot init uh, and then def update self uh, super dot update and then there's I believe over in here we have entities entity if I remember correctly I have to call the physics update yeah so that'll be self dot physics update and then that has to be passed self.e.window.dt, self.e.game.tilemap, which doesn't exist yet, but that will exist later. Um, now we can create the player, which is self.player equals pp. Uh, I know. Uh, from dot, no, from scripts dot player import player. And we do player, and I believe it's like type location, something like that. So we just do player, and then I say um, 50 50. I think that should be in the air, maybe. Um, and then we need to load the tile map. So self dot tile map dot uh, tiles tile map stop load. Load path spawn hook on uh, why what is that? That's like a type hinting thing, but what? Oh, no, no, never mind. I, I just misread that. That's so lambda thing. Um, so just the path. So uh load data maps and we'll say test zero dot p map and then i have to actually put the map over there so for that we go over here copy that go uh maps we drop that in there and then we say um self dot e entity groups dot and then where is it Entities, entity groups, and then we add, and then we just do uh, self dot player, and we add it to entities. Uh, I think that goes most of the way. Um, now we need a camera. I think I have a reference for this. Hold on. So over in. Uh, Where did I put it? Pig pen. Oh, here it is. Platformer demo. Here is the reference. So I'm just gonna copy a couple things in here. So there's a couple things that need to be defined that I don't remember the exact software. So pig pen dot camera self dot this. Uh, oh, that's another thing I have to do. Uh, self display dot get size, which I'll have to define display in a moment here. Tile map lock evil self dot tile map so that'll stop the camera from leaving the map. Self dot camera dot set target self dot player and then we can do over here a self dot camera dot update and then we have uh, we need a display so self dot display equals pygame dot surface six forty four twenty um self dot display dot fill we need to fill it black and then when we get down to the rendering part uh cycle onto the display 
not this. So self dot display, and then when we get over to here, we want to do that blit so uh, pygame dot transform dot scale self dot display over to the size of the screen dot screen dot get size, and then that'll get zero zero. So that will cover our display. All right. <laughs> A couple more things. So the tile map, um, the way this works is it uses a rect to uh, determine what should be shown. So I give it um, self dot display dot get. Uh, wait, uh, it's just self dot camera. So it's the location of the camera, and then this is where I do uh, self dot display dot get size, and then the offset will also be self dot camera. Um, I think that's most of it. Did I cycle the render? Yep. Uh, all right. Let's see what happens. Oh, import. Uh, that would be over here. From dot import pig pen as pp. There we go. Uh, did I not copy the map over? Did I forget to do that? I think I forgot to do that or something. I forgot to rename it test zero. So let's see what happens. Uh, player, so that's over here in the entity. Oh, arg, do that, and then you just pass it through. And then same thing on update. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. All right. Almost there. Takes two, but three were given. Uh, and see, def physics update. Oh, it's just tile map. It doesn't need DT. Uh. Why is it so small? Oh, it should be 320 by 240. Wait, 210? Look at that. The player's right there. You can see him. Um, so now we need to get the physics working. So for that, that's not hard. I think. Um, Self acceleration one equals 100, something like that. Uh, and that might actually just do it. <laughs> Something's wrong there. Uh, something has physics that shouldn't, is what happened. Probably. So let me just drop them a bit lower. So that's closer. Um, so standing on the fences, that's not an okay thing to do. Uh, we have to go over to... Uh, we have to mark this stuff as not having hitboxes. So we go in here. Um, this should have what we need, basically. So we just take this, and then we only do the first... Uh, it's, um, I'll just take that and then you just close it off. Oh, did I seriously? Oh, that's a problem. Where did I? I turned off the collision on the grass, not the. Okay. Um, just a minor issue. So that should do that. And then over here, this is the one that needs no collisions. But the decor also needs no collisions. Um, so we do 
flags empty. Uh, and then we get, uh, we have five. So we have this one, this one, this one, and this one. None of them need to have physics. Um, and then the ramps, there's a flag for that. I trying to remember what it is. It's like ramp L and ramp R or something like that. Hold on, I have I have an, another reference for that one moment. Uh, uh, images, sprite sheets. Yep. So, uh, ignore the D part. We just need the R part. So we just grab like this, I guess. Then we go over here and drop it in there. And then, so this is uh, ramp R and this is ramp L. So that should make a ramps function in theory. So let's see if it works. Look at that, it landed on the ground. So let's increase setting acceleration real quick. And then we need to add controls. So for this, I do have this thing and I can go uh, import pygame, pygame.k right, pygame.k left. So those are our two things. Um, and also pygame.k up. So we have right, which is a button with the, this, this weird number associated with it. Uh, we have left, which is also a button with a different number, which is just four. Um, and then we have up, which is another button with uh, this one's six. And then that should give us access to the input. Um, so the trick here, uh, here's another good reference for this, hold on. Active, pig pen, pull up the demo again. I'm just gonna close this stuff, I don't need it anymore. All right, so in here we have, oh, I did it actually outside of the player. Um, this is a point in here. Ah, here it is, apply force. Um, that should just work, I think. And instead of self dot move keys, it's self dot e input dot holding uh, right, and then holding left. Let's just give it a speed. Self dot speed, uh, and then that's just self dot apply force. And that should make it so I can walk. Look, the ramp works. The gravity is so slow that I just kind of fall down though, in a weird way. So let's make it so I can jump. That will be, um, uh, if self.e input dot pressed up, uh, self dot uh, velocity one equals negative 200 and I'll put that up over by the movement stuff that's a big jump why is there physics here 
something is oh um this needs uh where is it under z needs offset equals self dot camera and then There we go. Now the physics should be correct. So, oh, that's, what was that? I don't like the, that, ooh. I forgot about that aspect of my ramps. Um, let me fix that. I forgot there has to be ground next to it. I can't just stick it on a corner like that. Um, I could rewrite it so that it handles that case better, but I don't feel like doing that right now. Um, where's my low light? So, just like, load the save, and all I gotta do to fix this, grab that, grab this, find the layer, it's right here, do that, and that should fix it. Um, and... Uh, we have a collection, copy this over to the maps. We'll call this test one. Update this over here to use test one. And there we go. Uh, this one technically also has it. I guess it does, apparently it's not a problem right here. So uh, it's a minor issue it seems with the ramps. Um, they need another pixel on the top. Or, wait, there's a couple ways I can do this. I can make the player thinner. If the player's thinner, it'll be closer, but I also do probably need to update the ramp. So, there's two things that have to be changed here. So, the player should be thinner. How thin? Let's see. Should probably be like that. So that's four. So that means minus one more. Uh, so we go over here. It's now four way instead of eight, and we do that. That will presumably fix our issues, yeah. All right, so now it's more like I'm standing on the ramp, which is good. Okay, now I want it to be like, um, I should do this. Ooh, I know. Uh, if self e input dot holding up self dot acceleration one equals two hundred, else equals actually it should be like four hundred and three hundred. Um, and then that should be like 150 maybe. And then this, I need to make it so you walk a bit slower. So I can change the height of the jump by holding down. So I go up to the, uh, to the okay, it's not that much of a change, it needs to be more of a change. Uh, So let's say 450 and 250. So it's gonna be pretty floaty. So you, you can jump high or you can just not jump that high. Okay, I like that. That feels decent. Um, so the next thing I have to do uh, is make the player rotate. So I just have to do self dot auto flip equals one, I think. Yeah, and now it, it turns. Um, so that deals with a lot of the stuff. We have a world we can run around in and everything. That's nice. Um, next up would be to do the foliage in the grass. 
um, and then it's pretty much just a uh, animate the player, add polish, add NPCs. Oh, I didn't need to do the NPC portraits. Um, and then create the world. And actually, there's not a whole lot left to do, which gives me a lot of time for polish, which is good. Um, a lot of this game is going to be exploration. I guess there are some. It, there's a lot of NPC interaction mechanics I have to deal with, so like text and stuff. So that might take a bit. Um, but the actual running around in the world stuff's already pretty much functional. <laughs> um, lots of polish needed though. Uh, so I will add grass everywhere, and then I will add like the the foliage moving around, and probably some kind of wind. And then I'll also put like stars in the background and stuff that needs to be done. So background art, so it needs to be stars and like planets and stuff, and some other things. Um, and then I have to do some shaders and all. yeah. So there's still a lot left, but um, uh, lots of good progress so far. Uh, I'm gonna read chat real quick though. Um, all right, you're back. How's it going? Um, uh, making good progress. Uh, what kind of game is exploration? Kind of make a yellow tree. The reason I don't want a yellow tree is because I'm gonna have like wheat, and then I'm also going to have um, the roof of this building here. So, I kind of don't want to mess with that. Oh, also, if I have time, I might make interiors for the buildings. That would be fun. Um, they would serve no actual purpose, but um, just for exploration, that would be cool. Uh, you've been watching for one hour now, and you need to go study it. Well, good for you. Um, I'm probably going to have to end this stream soon in a bit, because I have not eaten lunch, and it's like 3.30. Uh, <laughs> so I, I do need to eat. I'm gonna keep well finishing the chat though. Am I going to release all the stuff I made? Like, uh, oh, the um, pig pen stuff. Uh, that's under a different license, so that's what the license that TXT is for right here. Um, it's got a funny license on it, so it's MIT except it has one clause here. If the date is July 2024 or later, permission is hereby granted, meaning that. The, you guys, uh, th this is not code that people can use until uh, after 2024. Um, uh, so that, that's that's how that's gonna work. So it will be there, so you can look at it, but I mean, legally you can't use it until uh, next year. Um, what do I use for the music overlay? I wrote it myself. Um, it uses flask and, uh, well, mostly flask. <laughs> I, wait, it's like, um, I think it, I don't know, it might be, I don't know what's running the audio. It might be Pygame without a window, or it might be, um, I might have used something else running the audio, I'm not sure, but, um, and then it just sends the information to a flask server, and the flask server renders it, so it just automatically updates it as well. Actually, this flask server requests updates from the music player as to what's playing, I think. I think that's how it would I don't know. Um, what about the fishing game? This is for the Ludum Dare. It's, I'm just making this for like 48 hours and that's it. Uh, uh, I'm doing the compo, not the jam. So I think the only difference between jam and compo is like the rules for asset creation and the team size. So compo is individual. Um, jam, you don't get the extra day in jam for Lunar Degree. Oh, no, I think you do. Maybe? I think you get one more day in the Lunar Degree for, um, if you do jam. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing compo. So I have to be done tomorrow night. I get, um, well, I'm down to less than, uh, 30 hours left. Uh, I have a tutorial on platformers in Python. Uh... How did I start to learn uh, how to code to, how to code games with Python? Like, how did I get involved, and in, from what did I learn from? Um, so there's a book called Inventing Games with Python that I started learning from. Um, although I I learned Python from that, I I did not. <laughs> it has a section for Pygame, but I did not use it. I, I I 
found code online, just like example code for Pygame, and then I went from there. And I just learned little by little, and in a way that's very, like, not optimal at all. I don't recommend learning that way. Uh, the book was good, but um, the everything else, like, I just did probably the worst way possible, where you just learn from just examples. So you just copy code and see what works and mess around with it. Well, the part where you mess around with it is where you actually do learn things. So when you have code that works, you need to make sure, sure you mess around it and make sure you understand how it works. So that's really important. But um, yeah, that's how that is. Uh, for um, in general, it's just I, I made games for fun and then I learned from there. Um, for actually, like, Pygame itself is really simple. Um, for Py, well, you're, the question does specifically say Python, not Pygame. Um, so for Python, I mean, just learn the basics and then, like, really most programming languages aren't that complicated. They're, the hard part is knowing how to use the language to solve problems. So you can learn the syntax of the language in a day, usually, at least the basics. Um, and then the hard part is actually being able to do stuff with that. And for that, you need practice. You, there's tons of um, tutorials that will take you through projects and stuff so you can learn. Um, but it's important to try to step out and do things on your own at some point. Anyways, um, so I'm pretty happy with where I am so far. Um, I, I will end the stream here. I will take a break, eat, and then I will come back and get to working again. Um, I would expect probably maybe another four to six hour stream. I don't know. Uh, maybe longer. It depends. Um, but yeah, that's that. Uh, have I ever used Arcade? Mm, uh, no, I haven't. But I, I have looked into it. Um, and I, I have looked into it enough to know that I, I'm not interested in using it. Anyways. Uh, so I'm gonna end the stream here. Um, I'll see you guys later um, Probably I'll take maybe a two hour break two to three hours I don't know and then I'll come back and probably be streaming most of the rest of the night um, My goal for today is probably get I Would say probably finish the game's Mechanics so I will be able to make the game playable and then I have to make the game look nice uh, Tomorrow and also add the sound tomorrow I usually do the, the sound the day after. Anyways, uh, I'm ending the stream here. Bye. I'll see you later.